Hello and welcome to the Dino Six Pack Dynasty Football Podcast. I have a really exciting episode planned today. I'm joined by my buddy Ronnie A. Evans. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How are you? Doing pretty good, man. It's early out here on the West Coast, but there's no better way to start the day off than talking about some Dynasty trades here. Um, so, of course, this is the third installment of this that we've done. For those of you seen the first two, basically what we do is I manage a ton of uh, Dynasty Leagues. Um, they're all like real paid leagues. Um, these are all trades that have gone down um, in between like the last week of preseason and yesterday. Um, so trades that have actually happened in real leagues to kind of start the year. Um, so what we're going to do through what we're going to do is go through here and kind of grade these trades, tell us which side we like, give a little bit of pointers here and there. Um, just a few kind of quick thoughts on some guys, and then uh, we'll move on. We got 12 total trades we want to get to. Um, before we get going here, of course, make sure to hit the subscribe and like button. Make sure you get all the content like this. Um, head on over to fantasy6pack.net slash plans. Um, become a member over there. You get all sorts of good stuff. You get custom rankings. You get DFS and betting projections. Um, our guy on our Sunday social uh, betting show, Chris, yesterday, he killed it. Like pretty much every single bet he he claimed, like almost every single one of them came through. Um, on top of all that, we have a Discord form where you can hop in, DM us directly, get uh, fantasy advice custom directly for your league. Um, it's really a good time. There's always a lot of conversation going on over there, but uh, we won't waste too much more time. You ready to get going? Talk about some trades here. I am. I am. I got all my Tennessee balls stuff on to prove. I like it. Even though we lost to Florida. Hey, here sports you got it right. Actually, before we get going here, I kind of want to take a note. I've been doing a little bit of a research um, and I'm pretty sure I found some paperwork that says that you are the uh, leader of the Sky Moore fan club. Is that correct? How are you feeling after week two's performance? Um, I'm feeling great. And I do want to put it out there that John Hansen over at Sirius XM and Fantasy Points, he is also like, he's the big name that's been on Sky Moore. But he mm-hmm. and I, yeah, we've been talking about him since like February last year. And um, I love him. I've been in a meme mode almost and how big of a Sky Moore fan I am. And I was happy. I think that the truth is the trajectory for Sky Moore, like we, if I can do this correctly with my camera, we live in a, <laughs> a, an age where you expect a rookie receiver to come in and hit. And then like, their career mm-hmm. either stays there or it declines. Sky Moore is much more of your classic prospect where it's it's more of like, if this is year one, here's year two, here's year three. And then my expectation is 2025, 2026. If he's going to turn into anything consistently viable for fantasy, it's probably coming then. So mm-hmm. I love him. Dynasty stash. I really don't care about rostering him and redraft, despite everything I'll say on Twitter. You yeah. wouldn't get that impression if you looked at it. But <laughs> talk to me individually, I'll be the real take for sure. Yeah, absolutely. When I saw a stat line yesterday, I was like the first thing that popped in my mind because I were in a one dynasty league together, and I remember it crushed last week. And I even had him in a couple leagues. So I was like, oh man, that's tough. Um, and of course, I benched him in the two leagues I have him. Goes off for a touchdown, like seventy yards. I'm like, well, that's what I get. Got to got to stay through ups and downs. I've got a league that I'm trying to tank in where I was the number one scoring team six of the last seven years and it's contract expiring contract. Mm. So speaking of trade ships, I traded away a good segue this off season. I traded away or lost to contracts. Ta- Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, Austin Eckler, Josh Jacobs, Devonte Adams, Stefan Diggs, Terry McLaurin, Cole wow. Komet, and then like six IDP stuff. My team was a absolute powerhouse. So mm-hmm. I trade all these guys. I've got seven picks in the first 17 next year. And I'm pretty excited about that. Good draft uh, for it. Starting right? Sky Moore, Nico Collins, and Puka. <laughs> Wide uh, receiver <laughs> in this tank. I'm 2-0. and oh. I can't stop winning because of those guys. That's a good <laughs> problem to have, though. <laughs> I'm not going to get Marvin Harrison Jr. because of freaking Puka. <laughs> Just like we all thought at the start of the year. And we oh, even yeah. do. We have a Puka trade here kind of buried in at the very end. So I love it. Uh, I saw perfect. That. Yeah, that was one of them that just went down uh, right before games kicked off yesterday. It's kind of a fun one. But all right, let's get going here. First trade we got today. Um, so scrolling across the bottom here, if you're watching at home. So we got a 10-team Superflex PPR league. Um, and the disclosure, I think this one went down after week one, kind of the big performance there. So I think this was a good sell high here. Uh, but we got Tyler Algier for a 2025 second and a 2026 first. Um, where, you, where do you come in on this one? I, I, I will take the picks. Take the picks. Mm-hmm. And it, I actually, I love Tyler out here. Every year I pick mm-hmm. three prospects from tight end, wide receiver, and running back, one from each that I feel like are outside of people's like top 30 and most rookie mm-hmm. drafts. And I just, I, whether it's because of memes or because I genuinely believe in them, I, I attach myself to them. And last year it was Tyler out here, Sky Moore, and Greg Dolchik, and was pretty happy with two of them. Not, Not bad, yeah. <laughs> 
And uh, I love him. He's really, really good. He's never going to be somebody that is winning you a fantasy football league unless it's a fluke week, simply because his athletic profile doesn't match up to that sort of output in the long run. But yeah, even even though I love the guy, it's the Bijan show. We saw it this week, and I'm sure the guy who made that trade was watching the games this week and probably kicking himself. That's a tough loss, and that's a great example of, even though it's a 2025 second and 2026 first, 2026 class, who knows? That's a long way away. 2025, it's got some names in it. Um, and Tyler Algier is like, he's just, I, I don't know. Maybe if I saw the team and they didn't have any running backs, I'd be like, okay. But I would have traded those assets for someone else if that was the case. Yeah, I'm on the same spot here. Like, if you told me it was 2025 second and 2026 second, then okay, maybe I could see it if it was like a deeper league. You mean um, 2024 and 2025? Or, or even if you just kept them, you know, seconds in 25 and 26, you know, and you wanted to go, you know, move those seconds to go get a running back. Like, at least, you know, Algiers probably oh, right, right. 10, 10, 15 to carries. Um, he's going to have a solid role. But, I mean, yeah, like as you said, the talent dis- discrepancy between him and Bijan was full display yesterday. Um, you know, especially in a 10-team league. Like, even though it's not until 2026, I mean, that's a top 10 rookie that's going to be coming in in the league. So right. it's not like it's a – going to fall to the end of like the round where it's like a pick 15 or something like that like it's a it's a premium pick pretty much any single year so we're in agreement here uh sorry. We'll pick picks. sorry i didn't interrupt you i thought you're done no no oh, were you gonna say that first time doing a pod together we'll, we'll get through um yeah, yeah. Uh, scenario where that ends up being a win Bijan mm-hmm. tears the acl that's it that's that's pretty that's much it. it yeah um, absolutely and i'm not gonna count on that i love Bijan too much no, I mean, his contact balance, too. Like, it seems like he does a good job of not taking big hits, too. Like, that's, like, one of the things that makes him so special when you're out there watching him. Just, especially that first week you saw, like, that stop and go. He put on the guy when he scored the touchdown. It's just like, oh, man, this guy's movement skills are just next level. He's on pace for 86 receptions his rookie year. And I saw a post last night that took that and applied it to running backs taken in the first round. And it's, like, Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, yeah. Hall of Famer, Bijan. And as much as like he frustrates fantasy, but fantasy GMs like because of the Drake London, Kyle Pitts side, as far as like a coach for like designing a run game for Bijan, like and getting running backs involved, like you really can't ask for much better. Yeah, man. I live in Atlanta. Uh, people here are pretty like everyone's a little confused, but happy with the wins. I say I'm sure they're like, yeah, lots of different emotions there. Yeah. Uh, let's kick it on to our next one here, going a little bit deeper here. So we're kicking it down to 12 teams in this one. Um, what we got here, uh, we got Matt Stafford and Derrick Henry, um, and that is moving for DeAndre Swift, a 2026 first, second, and third. And a little bit of uh, clarification on this trade. This one actually went down before the game last week. So whoever got the Swift side, man, like, good, good call, whatever you knew. Um, but, of course, this is Dynasty, so it's more than just one week. Um, so which side do you like more here? You, you want the vets or do you want the the, the lottery ticket and Swift and the, the picks down the road? Um, I would want to see the roster. I, like my initial gut reaction in Dynasty is always youth and firepower. And you got mm-hmm. both on the second side of this and you don't have – you have one in the first one. But – if this is a super flex league and the guy is like a contender and he needs a quarterback, Matthew mm-hmm. Stafford might be a league winner this year. Uh, like, I don't know what's happening in uh, up there in Los, Los Angeles right now. Like, um, they look better than everyone thought. They, I don't mm-hmm. care who you are. If you're sitting here victory lapping, the Rams being good, I want to see the receipts because I don't believe that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is a really, really tough one. My gut says DeAndre Swift in the first mm-hmm. every time. But if you're a contender, I could see I could see you like being okay with the first side of that. So that would be my answer. I think probably in both scenarios, if you put a gun in my head, I'd rather have the first and swift. But I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's a tough one. I I agree, man. Stafford looks good. He looks like he's had a little bit of a resurgence. And I mean, he doesn't have Cooper Cup out there yet. So there's a realistic world where he can even improve a little bit more on the efficiency we've seen early in the year. Uh, for me on this one, like kind of how I look at this is I, I kind of try and break down the part. So like for Matt Stafford, okay, super flex league, would I take a first and a third for him? Like maybe that's fair, but then you're looking at Swift and a second for Henry. I, I think I kind of like the Henry side that I worry about what happens even just next week when Kenny Gainwell comes back. Like what I, I just see a world where 
all week long we hear, oh, Kenny Gainwell, he's healthy, he's back, he's the starter, and then Rashad Penny gets like 18 carries in week three, and everybody's just like, what the hell is going on here? I'm pretty sure that won't happen, but the rest yeah, of it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so I'll, I'll take the vets on this side. Like, normally I'm the same. Um, I, I usually lean youth for Dynasty, but I actually think in this case I'll lean the vets. I think if I was going to pivot off these guys, I think you could probably get a little bit more even going and selling these guys individually. Like, go find a contender that needs a QB2 go package him to Stafford, and then yeah. go same thing, find a, a running back needy team, go see what you can get for Henry there. This is a great example where roster construction gives you all the context. Because if the DeAndre Swift side that's trading him away is mm-hmm. like rebuilding, or excuse me, that's trading for DeAndre Swift is rebuilding and getting away Matthew Stafford and Derrick Henry, and flip side, that guy that's absorbing Stafford and Henry are contending right now. Mm-hmm. I think it's a fine trade for both. Like, yeah. Um, if it's figure not, out a way to bring, bring that into this next time. One of them made a stupid move here. Yeah, no, no kidding, right? Oh, then again, if we get 30 points swift every week, I mean, shoot. Who yeah, knows? No, if, if he's a guy that's a six yard per carry on 30 touches per week, man, we got a, another league winner here along with Stafford. All right, going on to trade number three here. And this is another one, uh, same setup as we got here, 12 team super flex PPR. Uh, we've got another quarterback on the move. we got Jared Goff and Alexander Madison, who's in the running for one of the biggest busts so far this year uh, for Deuce yeah. Vaughn. First rounder and 24 and 26 plus a 26 second rounder kick on on that. Um, I don't super care flex, about even with it. Even with care. even with super flex. Okay. I don't care. Jared Goff and Alexander Madison are two guys that I just am not looking at for my roster heading forward. Maybe mm-hmm. Jared Goff for the next couple of years, but uh, you're getting a second round pick in 2025, which is whatever. And super flex, you're getting a first next year, and then you're getting a first. At, pair up with that three years down the road Mm -hmm. you're basically setting yourself up to ensure that your roster is okay moving forward and um alexander madison is not going to be rosterable next year that's my prediction and jared goff is fine but Mm -hmm. he's probably got two or three years left at best of elite production so yeah this is immediately i looked at the 2021st i'd rather i would be willing to trade madison and goff potentially for a first and a second straight up yeah, I, I'll take the, the pick side on this one. And this isn't even just my Cowboys side coming out wanting Deuce Vaughn here. <laughs> um, I'm a big Hendon Hooker fan, personally. I mean, I'm sure as a Tennessee guy, yeah. you know what I'm talking about here. I think that, you know, had he not had a bum bum knee coming out of this last draft here where he just got hurt, man, I think that he would have been a side. I think he's better than Will Levis. Like, I have had him ahead of Will Levis in my dynasty drinks from the start. I still have him ahead of Will Levis. I think he's going to be better than he is. Um, I mean, you look at what he did in Tennessee, man, like, he had some good weapons down there, you know, Cedric right Tillman, Hyatt, exactly. And look what they do now without him. I'm I'm a big Hendon Hooker guy. So I think that uh, Goff, his job is safe for sure this year, probably even next year, because it takes a little bit for guys to come back from that. But I think years three and on, I think you're looking at the Hendon Hooker show there. And I think that that's a great pairing. You know, of course, that far down the road in football is like dog years. Like you never even know if Dan Campbell will still be there. But I, I like the, the thought of a healthy Hendon Hooker sliding into what they've built so far in Detroit there. Um, so, yeah. The other thing I'm looking at here is a 2025 second and 2026 first. That is just ammunition to basically guarantee that I can get this 2024 first up inside the top five. Um, package that up. And at that point, exactly. then it's over like, for me. Let's say that this trade allows that guy to go get Caleb Williams next year. And basically, a, he just traded yeah. Jared Goff and Alexander Madison for Caleb Williams. Like Changed like, the entire trajectory of his franchise with a move like that. Yeah, yeah. that's a huge win for the uh, the pick side. So here's another one. So I'm going to be intrigued to see if you both are on the picks on this one here. Um, this one was a 12-team super flex. Uh, guy bailed on Zach Charbonnet uh, for a third and 24 and 25, and then a second and 24. Um, you still going the picks here? Are you a little bit worried about the slow start from Charbonnet? Or where, where are you coming at on this one? Because, you know, if you flash back a little bit, I think whether it's super flex or uh, one quarterback, you're spending a late first, maybe an early second in some leagues to grab Charbonnet. Um, are you feeling like that was an overpay where you want to just recoup what you can, or are you riding it out here? I would take the Charbonnet side just on the assumption that he gets the workload at some point this year, and then I would immediately sell him again for more. Okay. Um, I, I'm a Seahawks fan and really, really like Kenneth Walker, but um, my expectations for him in Dynasty certainly took a little bit of a hit last year, but they didn't fall off. Like even the Charbonnet draft, I was like, ah, they don't have any other running backs. And Pete Carroll's an absolute weirdo. Mm-hmm. Sure, they took Charbonnet. Great down. coach, great coach, but yeah, you great can't, coach. Can't yeah, trust like he, he they, they've drafted weird for fifteen years. <laughs> so like, <laughs> I uh, 
I don't know. I think that's what I would do. I don't like either of those sides. Like I don't want to, I, I, I don't really want either side of that trade. So for me, I would play strategy. I'd pick up Charbonnet and wait to flip him. Yep. I'll go Charbonnet here too. I mean, I, I do, I gave him a late round one grade for, for fantasy purposes, of course, not for the real NFL. Um, and you know, you look at how they brought Kenneth Walker along last year, like it was slow. I think he had like one carry the first game he came back and granted he had, if I remember like a core surgery or something like that, or some sort of injury that kind of brought him along slow. Um, but again, this is Kenneth Walker's backfield. Like I think he's at no point is he dropping below like 60% of the carries and the touches here. Sure. Um, but Charbonnet, he will pick up some passing game work as he goes on. I'm, I'm not sure that DJ yeah. Dallas is a third down back all year long. Um, although that would be the most Pete Carroll thing ever to just have DJ to Dallas over there. They're, they're, they're running back. They spent another high pick on. Um, but yeah, I'll go Sharps here. Um, you just gave up a first. I don't think it's worth bailing for a second and two thirds, two games later. Um, well, and you, you nailed an it too. Like this. You, uh, you hit the nail on the head when you were talking about like Kenneth Walker's not going to get, get rid of the backfield, but Charbonnet might factor in and probably will as a pass again mm-hmm. back eventually. Even like if, if let's say that his best case scenario is in between where the haters are and the truthers are for Charbonnet, and he just ends up being like a middling RB3 with upside weeks when Walker's out for the next three or four years. Mm-hmm. I'd still rather have that than like, Third, maybe the 2025 second is what's giving me pause, but still, I, I'm sticking with my pick. Take the Charbonnet side, and if he pops and you don't love him, just flip him. I mean, another thing, too, is like Kenneth Walker, extremely talented, but he has a violent running style. So the chances of him missing time at any given week yes. are they're, they're oh. above 50% just the way he plays. Um, and at that point, then you have a chance for a workhorse in that offense. Absolutely. Thing. I agree with you there. So here is one kind of how at the start of the show, I talked about how you were like the leader of the Skymore fan club. Since he's kind of came in and just from a fantasy purpose, I've been a little bit of the leader of like kind of the hate club on this guy. Um, so I'm sure you see which side you come in here. Uh, we got James Conner straight up for a 2020 for second round pick give me um, the second really okay even so context on this one um this is kind of slotting in as like an rb2 flex on like a i don't i won't say contender but like an in the mix team does that change it all for you given that little well, bit of construction? next year's class just to reiterate this with and i did a deep dive on this class with my buddy jeff a week or two ago on the phone um i'm not gonna waste your time pulling this up it's gonna take me two minutes yeah there are you've got Four, potentially five quarterbacks that are probably going to get taken in the top 15 in Superflex Leagues next year. So we got like, what's that, Dave, Williams, uh, Phoenix, Ewers. Phoenix might go. Um, there's that, there's like two other kids that might pop up. I can't remember the name right now. Like McCarthy's in that mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there, mm-hmm. There's like, if you're in a Superflex League, your skill position draft outside of Marvin Harrison and Brock Bowers kind of starts around pick seven or eight in the sure. starts hunting class. So a second round pick next year, if you want to take quarterbacks out of it, it's a mid-round first in a lot of cases in this year's mm-hmm. class. And I would rather have that than James Conner. Yeah, not not a lot to, to beat around on here. I'm I'm kind of the same way here. I'm not a big James Conner guy. I've never been a, a huge James Conner guy. You know, of course, his story is incredible. But just from a straight... I'll disagree with you there. I like him and I think he's talented. But not, for fantasy, I've been out for a couple of years now. Yeah. Same exactly, yeah. Like from re- real life perspective, rooting for the guy, I love what he's yes, done. But yeah, yeah. like from fantasy, I'm all the way up. Especially this offense, man. Like the fact he's able to put up 100 yards, and they've been competitive two weeks in a row. Like I in my eliminator pool have picked the the Commanders and the Giants so far, and I have been sweating it out for both weeks. I don't think I'm betting yeah. against Josh Dobbs. Let's card but, again next yeah, week. Josh Dobbs, Tennessee boy, Mister Aerospace <laughs> Engineer. All right, so keeping it in the running back market here, uh, one that's got um, a little bit more perceived, I feel like, name value, but I don't know that it actually matches it up when you look at the fantasy stats here. Um, 12 or 14 team Superflex PPR, Joe Mixon moving for a 2024 first. Uh, what side do you got here? Um, I think I would probably go for the first in most scenarios, unless I'm a contender. I'm a much higher on Mixon than it seemed like the consensus was this offseason. Mm-hmm. Um, but Long term for dynasty, I'm uh, yeah, I don't know. You 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 start getting into 2025. I don't know what Joe Mixon is at that point. So looking at it that way, I think I'd rather go the first unless I genuinely like right now it's week two and I'm leading the league of scoring and I've got it by like a five or ten percent margin, something that's a mm-hmm. little bit more than just an anomaly. Um then I'd probably want Mixon because I know my first next year is gonna be bottom three, bottom four. But even then, in a Superflex League, we just talked about this. Like, there's – Ray GQ yeah. had a great post 
on Twitter a couple of days ago and it's like, is there even an RB1 in the 2024 class? No, there's not, but there's six guys that could be. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, you're getting one of them with this pick. And then you're getting Joe Mixon for potentially one or two more years after that max. Looking at the window, I'd rather go the first unless I was in it to win it right now. So, all right, question. Do you play any Debbie leagues? I don't do a ton of Debbie, no. Okay, but you do you do kind of keep up on the rookie class, it sounds like, in like the college. Yeah, level. yeah, I, I might as well. I should play a Debbie league because I do all the Debbie So, leagues. where would you rank like straight up right now? Um, like Joe Mixon versus like Travion Henderson, who's been off to a little bit of an up and down start this year. Like try and fast forward a year from now, um, like, you know, in a vacuum, like where would you rank them? Do you think that Mac Mixon's talent is still above that? Or do you think in a year when you're talking about like now, nah, like Henderson and a few of these other guys are clearly above Mixon? It's all about the window that you are trying to acquire the player for. So if the expectation is that you want Mixon to be viable for your team for the next three to four years, there's a good chance by the end of that, stretch it's not going to be so in that scenario i'd rather have henderson or one of these other running backs but if i'm in a league that either has contracts or tons of roster movement or is closer to a keeper league than a dynasty league Travion henderson he's not my favorite running back in this class let me just mm -hmm. preface that but yeah i don't know it's more about mixon's window and the future for mixon itself He's kind of at or past most metrics that people use around the industry to predict fall offs. And mm -hmm. on top of that, um, the window is closing for him. However, year one and two, Travion's going to go to a, he's got to go to a good offense and be the number one guy to beat out Nixon. So mm -hmm. that's a, that's a very, I don't know if I answered that. It's, it's, it's I tough. Like, I know, I it's, it's so hard to like players. hypotheticals without knowing what team it is. Cause you know, he could fall into a Chardonnay right. situation where it's like, okay, well now it's pretty clear. We want Mixon for at least these next two years, you know? Right. Like Henderson's not the world's best route runner or pass catcher. And he could go to a team where he's being used as a person down at second down back. And then yeah, I'd rather have Mixon. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. As somebody who spent like a first round pick on Travion Henderson in one of their leagues this year. Yeah. It's been an awesome start. Let me tell you there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> haven't, haven't been great. I, He's explosive. I, I, he, he is. Like, and to be fair, I haven't got a chance to sit down and watch those full Ohio State games yet. Um, but like just kind of doing a little bit of box score, looking at it, I'm just like, oh man, like I was hoping to get a little bit more out of this guy. Um, and then Donovan Edwards, who's another one that I'm like, man, I think I got the wrong running back out of that backfield, it looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see. The yeah. uh, actually the running back for Tennessee, um, Jalen Wright, he's a great guy in Debbie to put on your fucking excuse me, on your watch list. Oh, you can swear. You're good. We, our website's named after beer. You're totally good. Can I do a 30-second segue just on Jalen Wright? For the Absolutely. Viewer? Go for so it. So he put on 18 pounds this offseason and spent four months completely reworking the way he plays the entire running back position. It's not the same player. Like, if you told me that he was a different player in a different jersey or in the same jersey, I'd believe you. Um, he went from a guy that was totally off of my radar to, like – I might draft him in the second or third round if he goes to the right landing spot next year, if he declares. Okay. So anyway. I mean, it's not the craziest thing. Like, there's been a lot of NFL, like, skill talent that's came out of Tennessee these last few years. So, like, it's – and you just had, like, the Blitnikoff winner last year. So, I mean, I don't think that it's the craziest prediction to say that Tennessee's going to have some more NFL-level talent coming out here in the next few years. Sure. I feel like I'm going to have to have you back on at some point just to talk college here. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, who's next? Awesome. Um, all right, next uh, we got some quarterbacks here. Uh, so 14 team super flex, so a little bit deeper here. Um, so Jordan Love for Kirk Cousins and then a fourth. So it's kind of just like a throw and pick, kind of just offset the age a little bit here. Um, what side do you want here? Let's just say like you're a middle of the road team that has a legit chance of kind of contending or falling out. You're right in the middle here. Which side are you taking here? I don't care about the fourth. Um, yeah. So it's Love for Cousins, and that's – for me, is more of it, it, I'm assuming these aren't contract leagues, so you're getting the player. For um, none, no, none of these trades were contract leagues, they're just okay. straight. I'm, you love. I'm, I'm the biggest Kirk, I've got Kirk Cousins in five leagues this year. I, I love him he's so, mm -hmm. he's so much fun to watch because he's really not the world's best quarterback, but he's really good at passing, and that's yeah. all you do for fantasy. <laughs> I mean, you um, have 320 yards or more both weeks, so yeah, man. He's on pace for like 7,000 yards this year. I love that. <laughs> um, but that said, Jordan Love, uh, I'm not going to bet against Green Bay's system for quarterbacks, and it's proving it's to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so to get Jordan Love for eight years versus Kirk Cousins for probably three to four really good years, I might just rather have Love. Yeah, I'm actually with you here. I, I'll take Jordan Love straight up. Um, 
I think at the start of the year, I would have said Kirk, you know, even though the age difference that for the next two or three years, I think there's going to be a huge difference. But I mean, Jordan Lux came out. I mean, he had the passing yards haven't been huge. Like, so we'll preface it by that. The, the, the numbers have been propped up by three passing touchdowns each week. But he's been doing that without Christian Watson. It's like arguably his top receiver is not even out there. Down. He's still doing that. So yeah, I'll, I'll go youth here. You get the extra, the fourth round. I guess you, yeah, you get the fourth round pick just kind of thrown on top of it, and you get the younger quarterback. I mean, super flex. I think it's pretty easy. There's a very, very good chance that by the end of this season, Jordan Love is a top seven or eight dynasty quarterback. I mean, it's not the craziest thing, man. Like I, I picked the Packers and my preseason predictions as like the seventh or the seventh wild card, the seventh seed, the last wild card to sneak in there. Um, and if Aaron Jones misses more time, I, I feel a little bit more iffy about that. But like, yeah. I thought it was just going to be everything running through Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon. And Jordan Love has shown that, like, now he is at least at minimum. Like, even if the fall floors out a little bit, he's a, he's an average NFL quarterback. Like, you can you can operate an offense with him. Yeah, I was wrong about him. I was out during my uh, my scouting process a few years ago, and he's he's yep. certainly he looks like he belongs right now. He looks sure. good. And then it's so, okay. Next trade here. Not every trade that we do, of course, in dynasty is going to be for the top of your rosters, your starters. Like some of the moves you got to make are kind of filling up those bench spots in the bottom of your rosters here. Um, so this one here, we got a sixteen team superflex TPR. Um, a little bit of extra notice on here, a little bit extra on this. There is an IDP league. And so for my IDP leagues, the way I have the scoring set up is like your top defensive players are going to score about the same as your top running back. So your receivers like TJ Watt is just as like more valuable than a Derrick Henry. Um, so the reason I say that is the drafts are a little bit deeper. Like the, the rookie defensive players actually matter here. What we got here, 16 team super flex. We got Kadarius Tony for Trey Lance in a 2024 third. Where you got here? Can I just skip I, yeah, it's ugly. It's ugly. <laughs> You're asking to sky more truth in here. Um, look, all right. I had a great discussion with Jeff actually last night on the phone about this. So Sky Moore this season, we talked about it earlier. He's he's probably a wide receiver for at best with pop weeks. Um mm-hmm. Kadarius Tony, like they he's either gonna work out or he's not, but they're gonna try to make him work out. They've done it for two weeks in a row. He is going to continue to get the looks. And either if Andy Reid's eventually going to say, I can't handle this anyway, or I'm done with you, or he's going to figure it out. Mm-hmm. I'm leaning on the second one, even though I do not like Darius Tony. I think he is one of the dumbest players in the NFL. He doesn't <laughs> understand work ethic. He is an absolute buffoon as a human being. And I just don't like he makes Le'Veon Bell's knuckleheadedness when he did his contract thing look like Le'Veon Bell's it's a noble law. Yeah. <laughs> But I'd rather have Tony just because I know that I can sell him for more than whatever the heck that package is. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you here. The little bit of, uh, like, I guess, background on this one is uh, the Trey Lance dude. He did a good job capitalizing on the news. Like, as soon as, like, there was a little bit of positive, we were like, oh, Dallas is buying back in. It's a good fresh start. Like, that minute you got the sleeper notification. Somebody is on the trade block. And then a few minutes later, um, you know, he pulled this trade off. Uh, I... I, yeah, I'm pretty sure this was right after it happened. So I don't even think we'd had games played yet. So I can't even say it was like a sell low or a buy low on the, the Kadarius Tony side. It was just somebody capitalizing on the little bit of good news we've got on Trey Lance in like the last three years. Um, but yeah, I'll take Tony here and I'm immediately trying to flip him. I, I don't yeah. like either yeah. side here. I mean, the one thing you can say is kind of similar to what you said is, you know, it's a receiver and a Patrick Mahomes offense. So there's going to be some boom bust weeks in there. Uh, but yeah, in, in theory, I, I don't want either side of this. I think you could do a lot better no matter what you're doing. Um, next trade here. This one kind of reminds me a little bit of our Kirk Cousins, Jordan Love here. It's a little bit of an age difference, which running back doesn't make as big of a difference. Um, but 12 team super flex PPR. We got Derek Henry for Najee Harris. Which side you got here? I'm going Najee. I know that like Najee looks like everyone's like, oh, he looks terrible. And yeah, he doesn't look like the best running back in the world right now. But over at Greater Iron Ratings, Jeff DiMatteo built three or four years ago a running back workload too, which um, – I don't think it's public yet on the site, but it has for years now just perfectly predicted when running backs are going to start getting injured, when they fall off. Oh, everything. interesting. Derrick Henry was like the number one red flag for that last year. And then, of course, he got hurt. And I know that we don't mm-hmm. predict injuries, but you can predict fragility and kind of like yeah. a range in which a player is more likely to get injured or not. I like that. You can't pick injury. Um, or you can't predict injury, but you can predict fragility. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so – I'm like, I'm, I'm 
on Derek Henry. I don't own him anywhere. I have zero shares. I'm happy to package him in as like my RB two or three and redraft, which I know some mm-hmm. people will hear that and think I'm an idiot. But just go look at go look at his career trajectory, what the, the Titans offense is doing right now, his durability concerns. Najee is getting the ball for at least two more years. It's not mm-hmm. going away. Derrick Henry's got, I think, frankly, by this time next year, probably a better running back on that team behind him. Yeah, I think there's a chance that Derrick Henry's not on this team next year. I, we kind of had a uh, my show we did last week was kind of overreactions or take note. And for the Titans, my thing that I said was not an overreaction. I think that by the end of this year, they're, they're transitioned into the youth movement. And we're going to see either Malik Willis or Will Levis. We're going to see a heavy load of Tajay Spears, Traylon Burks. And at this point, they're going to be rolling it over. Good for Dynasty guys, bad for Titans fans. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> that being said, I'm not a big Najee guy. Me neither. But just to clarify. Before my buddy Matt freaks out, I'm still taking Najee here straight up. Uh, <laughs> I like Derek Henry more in a, in a vacuum, but if for Dynasty, yeah, I got to go Najee. I could see if I could just see my buddy Matt just like starting to seethe right now as I'm like setting it up to take Derek Henry. But now, I'm gonna, Najee here. Can we do a rental trade? Can I rent Derek Henry for the next seven weeks and then keep Najee yeah, for the next right? two years? I'll do that. Yeah, exactly. That's another one. Even okay. So you're a contender. Like last year, you finished second. You brought back most of your core. You make this switch to get Henry then? This is your um, RB2, we'll say. Your RB2, maybe even your flex. Not in Dynasty, even to get that ship. Just, I think that you lose maybe four points a week in your lineup by downgrading from Henry to Najee, like on their best weeks right now. Um, like, oh, okay. what I mean by that, if Najee has his best week and Henry has his, Henry's going to score more. Mm-hmm. But over the next three years, I don't play Dynasty for one year moves unless it is like Tyreek Hill or I'm picking up Travis Kelsey. I'm not trying to go pick up middling like RB2 guys that are a short shelf life because it's it's going to hurt me over the next three years more than I'll help. Um, and anything can happen in the playoffs too. Like mm-hmm. I just, I'm not a big fan of selling out for Dynasty unless it's for surefire assets. And Derek Henry is about as far from that for me right now at the running back position as you could be. Yeah, I think that anytime you're you're getting older at running back, you're playing with fire a little bit here. Like I think that the only way this is like a like I said, a, a trade that makes sense is you know it's the trade deadline. You're eleven and one, crushing everybody, and you just need some extra extra depth to make sure you know you don't get hit with an injury in the playoffs. Um, but yeah, dynasty ninety nine times out of ten, I'll, I'll go Najee here too. Well, and Derek, I'd be willing to bet that Derek Henry outscores Najee for the rest of the season. That doesn't change my analysis for dynasty. Yeah, I yeah, agreed with you there. Um, all right, let's kick it out here. So next one, a little bit deeper. Um, we're going to stick with some players that we just actually mentioned. Yeah, I like this here. one. This one's a fun one. So we got 16 teams. So same thing, the IPR in this, or IPR, IDP in this one. So very high scoring, the IDPs matter. Um, so we got Kenny Pickett for Traylon Burks, Tajay Spears, Drake Jackson, uh, who if you're not familiar with that, he's a San Francisco 49ers D lineman. I didn't check his stats from last night, but he was good in week one. He put up 29 fantasy points in this scoring. And then on top of that, you picked up a first and 25 and a second 26. So of course, you know, the 16 team super flex that really bumps up the value of good quarterbacks, which I'm not sure Kenny Pickett is, uh, but he is a quarterback. Um, so which side you got here? So Drake at Jackson right now, despite only putting up like four points in week two, is the D end 11. Um, doesn't mean anything. I've been playing IDP for a decade. These defensive ends, you basically can chalk pretty much all of them except for two to three up as like just totally random on whether they're going to pop or not each week. Mm-hmm. So come back to me in week six and see where Drake Jackson ends up. That said, just a segue, last year, pre-draft, I'm on like a mock draft round table with a bunch of IDP analysts, and we're in like round four. I'm like, give me Drake Jackson because I like his profile, I like his length, and in Dynasty, whether it's in 2023 or 2024, he's going to eventually be the guy that takes advantage of the attention on Nick Bosa, mm-hmm. and we are seeing that right now. So that's just a side note. I love drink action. Um, My favorite assets in Dynasty are always the guys that are free as rookies that end up like looking like they have a guaranteed path to play time. And then they round out 60% of your roster and you hit the rest of your picks and you're good to go. So anyway, um, PPR, Superflex, IDP, I'll take, um, give me Traylon Burks, Ty J. Spear, Drake Jackson, 2020 first and second every time. I love Kenny Pickett too, but. Um, you could probably flip that 2025 first plus like Tajay Spears next year in the offseason to go get a rookie pick and get a quarterback that's better than Kenny Pickett for the future. 
I don't know. I'd rather have those guys. And I'm I'm really high on Kenny Pickett for Dynasty too. I, I like him a lot. But yeah, I uh, I'm pretty skeptical generally, uh, especially in like the deeper the league gets. I'm skeptical about trading away quarterbacks and super flex leagues for position players. However, if you are going to do it, I mean, especially where I don't think Pickett is a superstar, I think this is a pretty good package. I mean, I think there's a realistic world next year where Traylon Burks and Tajay Spears are the RB1 and the wide receiver one on the Titans. Um, as we already mentioned, Drake Jackson, he's in a great spot for defensive line production. Um, I mean, he had three sacks the first week, so we saw like what he could do operating in that space. And then the way I look at it is I can immediately try and flip that 25 first and six second, go get a first in 2024. And then at that point, then I like this package even more. Um, so I'll, I'll agree with you here. I'll go with the package here. This is what you're aiming for if you're looking to kind of shift off a quarterback and kind of keep the rebuild going. This is the type of package you should be aiming for here. Yeah, I would have I would have done that without Drake Jackson in there too. He doesn't factor into the trade for me. I just like him. Yeah, he's just kind of a nice little little kick in there. Um, next trade here. Um, so sticking with uh, I guess we're going actually back to the Najee train here. Uh, Twelve team Superflex PPR. Uh, we got Najee Harris, Pat Freermuth, Kadarius Tony. For Garrett Wilson, Jake Ferguson, and Sean Tucker. Um, I didn't add it in this one. This one is tight end premium, too. It doesn't change it a lot for Ferguson, but oh, yeah. slight little bump. Slight little bump. Yeah, it's just a little bit for Firemuth, but... Um, oh, even bigger for Firemuth. Then, yeah, I mean, the bump there is bigger there. Than is it, do you know if it's full PPR premium or half point? This one is full PPR, and then you get a half point extra for catches and first downs on tight ends. It's a really interesting trade. Um I know. When well, I first saw it enough. came through, I was like, damn. And then I saw Garrett Wilson on the other side. And I was like, okay, maybe, but yeah. Well, here's the deal. My for me, it's an interesting trade, but I would I would walk away with the Garrett Wilson side anyway, like regardless. I, I'm mm-hmm. in even trades in Dynasty, I always want the side with the best player. Um, and then in this case, you're getting a guy who like if I can go if people are discounting Garrett Wilson in Dynasty right now, please tell me where I'll go join that league and buy him. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's easy. I, I, I think easily Garrett Wilson for me. Now that I think about it, I don't want the running back and the tight end from the same offense. Kadarius Tony, I'm kind of like, what if he works out, I'm more than happy to be wrong. Um, Sean Tucker's cute, but might not be anything. Although I do love him. Mm-hmm. Jake Ferguson, same thing. He is cute. Might be something, but probably not like dominating to the point where you're going to win your league because of him. There's, there's one guy in this trade that looks like a guy that's going to single-handedly win people leagues over the next two to three years, and that's Garrett Wilson. So I would take that side. Yep. I, I wish we had more to disagree on, but I'm, I'm with you here too. This was, in my opinion, <laughs> one of the best buy lows. Like this happened right after the Aaron Rodgers news, like the next day. Like this is how you capitalize on bad news. Yes, buy low on that's awesome. like Garrett Wilson. And then so kind of how I'm breaking this trade down here is I feel like Kadarius Tony and Sean Tucker are kind of in a similar boat where they're just lottery tickets. Like if they bust, whatever, you're not really doing the trade for either of those guys. Um, at that point, then you look at Garrett Wilson and Najee Harris, which for me is huge advantage, Garrett Wilson. Um, then you look at the Pat Freermuth, Jake Ferguson, which is a big jump for Freermuth, but it's not as big of a gap as what I have between Najee and Garrett. Um, I'm actually a little bit of a Jake Ferguson fan. Um, he's my second yeah. most owned player across all my leagues. I mean, we saw him get a touchdown last night. He was very heavily involved in week one. Um, you saw that Dalton Schultz was able to do in that offense the last few years. Dak likes to lean on a tight end. Um, I don't know if many people noticed it yesterday, but the Cowboys fans did. So our first two touchdowns of the day went to uh, Schoonmaker and Ferguson. And then the third time down, we tried to get our third string tight end a little reverse to get Hendershot in the end zone for a tight end. They're trying to get all three tight ends. Lamb owners and shambles. You could tell they were down there just having fun with it. Like, ah, like we got CD going off for yards, but let's see if we can get Hendershot a touchdown here. Yeah. It, just, it kind of made me laugh a little bit. But so I, I think Ferguson actually has kind of like some high end t- tight end too, maybe even some sneaky like back end tight end one week, especially once the buys right. start hitting. So I actually think that Ferg is a little bit more of an asset than he's getting credit for. Um, so I'll take the Garrett Wilson side. And I'm feeling pretty good about that one. I'm, I'm feeling like I, I got a pretty big steal here on this one if you're coming away. Um, and then last trade here, the day. Oh, go ahead, real quick. I was just going to say for the Ferguson thing, like I I'm with you. I actually really like him for dynasty. When I said that he's probably not going to be like a difference maker that wins championships. I look the same way at Pat Firemuth and most of the tight ends that are in the tight end, the eight, the tight end 15 range. It's kind of like, eh, I like him. I'll hold him for dynasty. Um, but high end tight end two, low end tight end one, isn't most likely winning the league for anyone. That's just yeah. where I'm with him and, and Firemuth right now. 
All right, last trade of the day here. This is a fun one, and this one's very relevant. And it's you could see trades like this happening in your leagues literally today after that what happened yesterday here. Um, so what we got here, and this is the only trade of the day that I was actually involved in, but I will tell you which side I got after I hear your opinion on it. So what we got here, 12-team Superflex PPR. We got Puka Nakua, Kendra Miller, and Will Levis for Matt Stafford and Gabe Davis. What side you got here? I love this. All right, so I've got a couple leagues actually with Kendra and Puka on, but on the roster. And Kendra for me, 50-50 on whether he ever becomes anything worthwhile for fantasy. But it's enough of a chance where I, I am I'm holding him everywhere I can. Would you say uh, he's like Tajay Spears equivalent, kind of in that same boat? I think he's a worse running back than Tajay. Tajay actually for me had a higher grade okay. than uh, Jameer Gibbs. I had them. I had them four and five. I had them flip flop the other way. I had Kendry. Tajay for me, the only downside to him was the knees. If he didn't have the knee problem, he might have been my second running back this class. Yeah. I really like mm-hmm. him, but I love Kendry too. And uh, the thing is, I don't. I, I'm not going to go into Kendry too much. Uh, but I, I like him. So he's a 50 50 like backup running back, perfect stash asset for Dynasty. He's I, I yeah. have him everywhere I can at Dynasty. Puka, I have literally everywhere I can except for leagues where I thought I had him and then didn't put him away. <laughs> well, I, I think I have of my 10 leagues this year, I've got him in six. <laughs> nice. That's but solid. It's just, it's it's not, I, I got lucky with Puka in March. And like I was telling you earlier, like he just happened to be my guy at wide receiver this year. So I was in early, but um, I take the Puka and Kendra side. I don't give a, I don't care about Will Levis. I don't really care about Gabe Davis. I know he did good this week. Matthew Stafford, I care about for about 14 weeks. Give me Puka. Really, Puka's the point of that. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, but then if you take Puka out of it, Kendra and Will Levis, I'd take the Stafford and Gabe Davis side over those two. But maybe not if I was, wasn't was like a straight contender. Mm-hmm. I mean, if I was in a rebuild scenario, I still might actually rather have Levis and Miller over Davis and Stafford just because Stafford's not an asset in two years. Sure. Um, but maybe I'd still rather have Davis. I don't know, man. The, the takeaway is give me the Puka, Kendrick Miller kind of side. Man. Okay, yeah, I think this trade definitely, it just comes down to how you feel about Puka here. And so, okay, so this trade, I um, – I tried to capitalize on the Puka hype and I mm. thought I was making a good move here. You know, I was, I'm a, comp- I won't say top. Was this before league, this week? It was literally yeah. like minutes before the game happened. <laughs> um, so I get, when I, when I sent it to you, like in the, in the chat yesterday, like it had happened like five minutes before that, like it had just happened. So like, That's okay, hilarious. here's my thoughts. So I'm probably the third, second, third best team in the league. So like I'm in the mix. I'll be in the playoffs barring crazy injuries hit me. And I have a ton of youth behind me. My receiver room's pretty deep. Like, I think in this league, I got, like, A.J. Brown as, like, my wide receiver three. So, like, I can afford to – you can never afford to give up rookies that are hitting like this, but I can afford to take a little bit of a hit at wide receiver. Sure. Um, Matt Stafford came and had a good game for me. I think the only reason that I'm not, like, in a better or a worse mental state today is because Gabe Davis did have a decent game. So, I was like, okay, at least I was a little bit there. Um, but, yeah, I'm – I'm feeling a little unsure, a little uneasy. Like, I think Stafford's going to do what I need him to do. He's going to be a good quarterback, too, this week. Like, Gabe Davis is a good fill-in. But, man, if Puka keeps this up, especially once Cooper Cup comes back, like, this could be one of those trades that I look back on, and I'm like, all right, I'm sure there's a lesson to be learned here. Um, but then again, it's it's hard because there's so many times you see fifth, sixth guy on ground guys that have a couple big weeks, and then they fade away. But Puka looks different, man. Like, not many run-of-the-mill He's rookies can go out there and get 20 targets. Like yeah. that's that's legit crazy. That's like almost up there with like DeAndre Swift having six yards of carry at thirty plus carries. Like that's like almost equal levels as crazy as that. Um, so yeah, I like I, I do think. I, yeah, it's it's tough, man. I, my thought process was like, yeah, like I took this guy in the thirtieth round of our draft. We did this draft um, with rookies before the rookie draft, and like every year we do our rookie draft before the NFL draft. So I got him with my thirtieth and my thirtieth round picks. Like I. It's free money at that point. And I was like, all right, I can get a guaranteed quarterback too and like a quarter or a wide receiver four or five for a playoff run. There's a chance Puka we're seeing the best two games of his career right now. Or I guess in my mind, the best game of his career. And then he followed it up with that. So I don't know, man. I think I would still in most cases take the Stafford and Gabe Davis side, but I, I don't feel as good about it as I did yesterday morning. I'll tell you that. <laughs> let, me, let me paint a picture for you with Puka. So because I, I agree with your process. And I, was, I wasn't I was there because I believed in Puka more, but I'm not taking victory laps on that. Like, if you talk mm-hmm. to me after week one, 
my feedback to three different people was Puka's amazing. Do not put him off your roster. He might not do anything this week. This 49ers defense is for real, and we really don't know whether Seattle's defense was a fluke or not that allowed mm-hmm. him to go. Clearly not. 54% yeah. target share. He's being used like a hybrid between Jarvis Landry and Robert Woods, which isn't going to go mm-hmm. away when Cooper Cup comes back. He's just not going to have 20 targets every game. Um, he, the only thing that I would have said immediately before making that trade was that Puka had enough of a showing in week one to make me comfortable that he wasn't going to be a nothing burger for fantasy. And at that mm-hmm. point, I could still get behind while well, I'd rather have Gabe Davis and the wide receiver two for Josh Allen, but Puka and Gabe Davis were the only two assets in that trade that mattered to me. Everything else is mm-hmm. kind of like whatever. Fair. Um, yeah. And uh, I think, I think that it's not the worst decision to go like you couldn't right now. You can't go trade Gabe Davis for Puka Nikola. No one in the world will make that trade. However, it wouldn't be the worst trade. I wouldn't look at it and be like, oh, you're an idiot for doing that. So yeah. I think you probably lost a little bit on that one, but it's not it's, it's not the worst. And the process was okay. It's not like yeah. you went and like freaked out because Travis Kelsey mixed week week one and right. traded. Like no, it, it's yeah, a good process, I feel like, but it it does happen, man. Like sometimes you gotta take your L's on these one. And I mean, I was in my process of trying to cope yesterday looking for some some nuggets to try and like ease the pain and i found some more stuff that just made me like even more sad about it. it's like one of the things in my mind i'm like all right what's gonna happen though is cooper cup's coming back in week five he's gonna come back into the slot he's gonna take up all those targets and then i start doing a little bit more like looking at it and i'm like damn okay so cooper cup is like 70 75 percent out of the slot through two weeks puka has been like 20 to 25 percent out of the slot and the rest he's been out wide so that's not gonna affect him like basically at all like if he may lose a few targets, but he's going to be on the field just as much. It's going to be two, two that loses out in this group. So I'm just like, yeah. man, I'm, yeah. I'm just yeah. hoping that, that Stafford just rides and just, I get the, the secondary benefits of Puka and Cooper cup down the stretch just by having Stafford on my team. But man, I think yeah, happen. It's lesson in patience that. here. Don't sell your rookies too early. No, you got Puka as a wide receiver two right now in fantasy, which is awesome. When Cooper Cup comes back, he's probably a wide receiver three, four, which is still like if you got him, that is a free starting profit. That's big time. Big profit. That's how you win leagues. Awesome, man. Well, hey, that's all I got for trades today. I really appreciate you coming on. This was a lot no of fun. Worries, man. I had a great time. I'm, I'm gonna I'll try and find a way to bring a little bit more roster construction into it, just to give a little bit more uh like background on some of these trades for next time. But this is fun, man. So what all do you got going on? Where can people find you? What do you got to plug? Like, what do you got sure. going on here, man? Um, super low key right now. I've been spending the last four months working with some people that have more money and wherewithal than I do on starting an AI fantasy football company. Um, oh wow! To help, like integrate that and everything. But no, no public info on that yet. I actually have a meeting on Thursday with them. Um, but. Down below right here is Fantasy Proceeds. That is an in-progress nonprofit for fantasy football and mental health and then aggregating charity work. Similar to like Fantasy Cares, but I'm not interested in taking Fantasy Cares place in the industry. I just want to like be a part of everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I've been with Gridiron Ratings for the last five years. Jeff DiMatteo is the brainchild behind that. And I would be willing to say that there are probably lots of people that are better at fantasy football than Jeff is. I cannot think of too many people outside of like genuinely outside of like the John Hansons of the world that spend as much time digesting information as he does. And mm-hmm. if you ever need someone to talk to about football and you want like an encyclopedia to drop on you, shoot him a DM and get on the phone for 15 minutes. He really, really knows his stuff and has impressed me for the better part of a decade as one of the more unheralded people in the industry that okay. deserves more attention. So. So So uh, gridiron rating, I was checking it out a little bit before the show. And so break it down for me a little bit. Essentially, it's like it's going through and like trying to make it an easier way to kind of rank fantasy players. It's it's kind of a work in progress right now because the uh, we had a site rebuild over the off season that the devs screwed up. So the site was supposed to go live in June and didn't get live until like September 12th. (laughs) Okay, Eh, better Um, late than never, I guess. But yeah, the idea right now is. Like if you go onto Gridiron Ratings rankings page, they're not rankings; it's player grades, and mm-hmm. everything 
uh, Jeff is trying to do with Gridiron Ratings is create a hub where you can go in and assess your information that you've gathered everywhere around the industry and then go to a place like Gridiron Ratings where you can then crop re reference that against situational information. So like the rankings are draft rates. And like, mm -hmm. I think, um, for example, like Justin Herbert, I think is like a 99. And then Mahomes was like an 86. And it's because... If you go in and you acquire Patrick Mahomes on your team, it's actually probably hurting your overall roster construction because of how high you have to draft them. Sure. So you can that go in sense. and sit in and look at that and say, all right, well, this guy's ranked number three, but if I take him here, it fits mm -hmm. with ADP. It's actually not the best pick. I should go take, like, I don't know, Tyreek Hill here instead. He's a 99. Mm -hmm. um, and so he's, it's just, it's a, constantly evolving site that is trying to attack fantasy football from a different angle. And um, there's some pretty cool stuff that he's working on. One of which is a draft guide for next year. We're going to use AI to help build out some of the graphics for that, which would be pretty interesting. Um, sweet. And then the last thing is uh, eventually getting to a point where the website a section of the website will only be images. And so like flipping through a card deck when you're looking at player mm -hmm. information, Instead of scrolling through a big list of, with all this data or having to like click through pages, you're like on Tinder and you're swiping through the running back rankings or swiping through the wide receiver guys. And I think uh, that's Jeff's idea, and I think it's really good. It might make I like that. I, it's easy to be able to like kind of process like smaller bite-sized pieces of info instead of just here's like a wall of text. Like good, like kind of pick out what the right, right. Like. You're at work talking with a friend, Puka Nakua or Gabe Davis. I don't know. Let's go to Good on Ravens. You just swipe through the two images of the guys. That's it. So. We'll or see you can just DM me and do the opposite of what I tell you to do in this trade. Yeah. Either way works on that. <laughs> <laughs> no way, man. We both, I think we agreed on all of the trades except for the final one. And that's not your fault because you were the one that made that trade. So it just, man, you win some, you lose some, man. Puka may be the next MVP. And Gabe we'll Davis might be a wide receiver 15 by the end of the season. And he could. Play. We'll see. But hey, man, again, I appreciate it. I told you I wanted to keep you under an hour. We're at like 50 minutes. That's good. Last person I told that to, we went for an hour and 40. So this is improvement. That just on that. means so we didn't have as much fun as we should have. Ah, well, we'll have to do this again. Like I said, I think we have like a college football discussion in the future. This was oh, more hey, college I'm football down. just kind of weaved in than I meant. So college football, IDP, and dynasty. I'm always, I can sit there and talk with anyone about it. I think that you know more than I do, and so does everyone else. But uh, uh, I don't know I've that. been doing it for 20 years, and I think I know my stuff enough to hang. Perfect. Well, maybe nothing officially yet, but maybe there will be another part two to this, everybody. This was a lot of fun. I appreciate you, Jordan. Thank you, buddy. Um, tell awesome. Mace and everybody else I said, hey, I love you guys. Absolutely. Well, um, again, everybody here, like, subscribe, make sure you get all the other videos, all the other content. You know, we pump out stuff for all three fantasy sports here. We got top five fantasy pros, rankers in baseball and football. Um, yeah, like, subscribe, fantasy six pack.net slash plans, become a member over there. Come chill with us in the Discord. Um, and yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Sounds good.